tinang kinuha yung mga pangalan ng mga anak o kinuha yung mga pangalan ng mga asawa at nire-enroll. Ano po ang direksyon nun? Gusto lang kunin ang pera sa DBM but there will be no new enrollments, no new members because they just want to get the money para pagtakpan yung mga nawawalang pera sa PhilHealth. The real mafia is kaya nilang gumawa ng kwento, kaya nilang magkunyari na may perang pumasok, kaya nilang magsabing may mga legal na basihan maski wala, at kaya nilang mag-implement ng batas maski hindi pa batas. G, that we embarked on to curb fraud was the stop payment mechanism. Because if you review the history in PhilHealth, ang daming fraudulent claims, wala kang laban kasi ang isasagot sa'yo palagi, hintayin na lang na matapos sa Supreme Court. And that will take several years. And while the case is taking its toll in the courts up to the Supreme Court, patuloy naman ang fraudulent activities. And our assessment during that time, if you have, let's say, Hospital A, maraming fraudulent claims. Hindi mo a-actionan, sasabihin mo, hintayin ang Supreme Court. In the seven years or ten years that you are fighting for that case in the Supreme Court, millions and millions of funds are being suctioned into fraud again. So what did we do? We implemented the stop payment mechanism. Ibig sabihin, pag ikaw ay maraming kaso, at hindi mo yan pinaparisolve at pinapatagal mo at pinapadelay, go ahead, take your time. But you will not be able to get reimbursements from PhilHealth pending the resolution of your case. Mr. Chair, may I ask the people from PhilHealth if that was effective in curbing fraud? Anyone can reply? Bumababa yung fraud specifically on cataract, dialysis, and pneumonia when the stop payment mechanism was instituted? Do I say, do I take it that silence means yes? Let me move, Mr. Chair, to my next question. Who overturned the stop payment mechanism? I'm sure someone knows who overturned the uh, stop payment policy. Kasi ang kagandahan kasi sana nun, Mr. Chair, dahil marami na nag at right and left na, at dahil puso ng bawat doktor at ospital, ang PhilHealth, the stop payment hurt them to the core. At marami ang lumapit, at ang kanilang sinabi, okay, we're going to negotiate, we are going to stop fraudulent claims, we are going to align with the mandate of the Philippine Health Insurance, basta ipagpatuloy nyo na kami. And then nagkaroon ng mga settlement na kumbaga may fines, wala ng kaso, hindi na gagamitin yung mga abogado para pahirapan yung PhilHealth. And that was good. So my question is, why would you overturn something that was helping your institution? And now you start talking about reforms, about cleansing PhilHealth, pretending that you can implement universal health care? My God, that's next to impossible. How can you implement universal health care if you insist and persist to be blind and deaf to what is happening around all of you? So Mr. Chair, may I request that PhilHealth produce documents that overturned the reforms that I initiated with huge and extreme difficulty in PhilHealth. Napakahirap po, Mr. Chair. Wala po akong sinabi nung mga nakaraang panahon, but my experience as chairman of the board was very difficult. First, board resolutions were not being headed to. Minsan hindi pa pinapasa, nagiging bulag-bulagan at naiipit at pilit na winawala. It is not true 
natakot na takot sila sa board resolutions just like what they are saying and pointing to in the case of the senior citizens because our experience actually points to the fact that many of our decisions lalong lalo na yung mga resolution related to fraud being approved and passed by the board ay hindi po pinapasa hahalong katin mo pa yung bawat opisina pupunta ka pa ba sa kababaan babaang opisina at hahanapin mo only to find out na oops hindi pala inimplement ang isasagot sa iyo ay ma'am hindi po nakarating sa opisina namin ang resolusyon nyo. That can be proven, Mr. Chair, if you look at the reckoning dates by which board resolutions and reforms on field health were passed, approved by the board, but remained unimplemented. So my next question, Mr. Chair, nung pong inuodit na ang field health, Right and left po na sinasabi, yung pera ng PhilHealth at yung pera daw ng senior citizens na 10.6 billion was diverted to DOH. Nagulat po ako because it's a big lie. May I inquire from PhilHealth if indeed there was entry of 10.6 billion to the coffers of PhilHealth. Can somebody from the finance department of PhilHealth or somebody from the legal office answer the question? Mr. Lumisako, you can reply to that. Mr. Chair, uh, Your Honor, uh, 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 good evening. Uh, based on record of PhilHealth, uh, Your Honor, Wala ho kaming uh, natanggap na sinasabi ni Congressman Gary na 10.6 billion, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, kung wala naman pala kayong natanggap, why is it that some of you here who are present here now kept on pointing to a 10.6 billion fund that was diverted from PhilHealth to DOH? Bakit pilit na gumagawa kayo ng mga kasinungalingan para pagtakpan ang mga pinaggagawa ng iilan? Honorable Garin, would you know in particular who uh, came out with a statement on that? Um, uh, Jan Basa, I also saw Ish in many of the meetings in Senate and even here. And um, I can, I'll, I'll uh, in fact, they had presentations to the board, explaining to the board na kaya walang pondo yung PhilHealth kasi dinivert daw sa DOH. Naniwala naman yung presidente during that time, si Dr. De La Serna, and they were, their, their attention were diverted to issues that were actually non-existent. And that was so, why Dr. the real... Bar I'm sorry, Dr. Vargas was quoted as saying that the 10.6... He was present in those meetings and during the times that the allegations... And I think he was the one who was always at the side of Dr. De La Serna. But it was Dr. De La Serna talking uh, about it. Per the, infer the, the whole board was made to believe that it was inexistent. And um, during that time... I don't know, maybe like the people who were feeding the board wrong information ended up being promoted, Mr. Chair. Konsensya na po nila yun kung hindi nila aminin kasi makikita nun naman bakit yung iba dito ay nagkaroon ng mabilisan na promotion. And now some of them are senior vice presidents. Anyway, Mr. Chair, I just brought that out in the open. Because that is how strong the real mafia is. Kaya nilang gumawa ng kwento. Kaya nilang magkunyari na may perang pumasok. Kaya nilang magsabing may mga legal na basihan maski wala. At kaya nilang mag-implement ng batas maski hindi pa batas. Paulit-ulit po kasi, nung inaudit ang PhilHealth, paulit-ulit pong rason ng ginawa 
naninakawan ko raw ng 10.6 billion ang PhilHealth at nilipat sa DOH. For the record, Mr. Chair, that is a big lie. But this lie was made because there was collusion during that time. Because the officers of PhilHealth told me na uubos ang pondo dahil hindi sila binabayaran ng DBM. So I went to DBM, very proud, asking for the payment. Nagagalit na nga ako, sabi ko, bayaran nyo yung PhilHealth. To my surprise, on the third meeting, para po akong binuhusan ng boiling water. Nanliit po ako at nahiya ako sa sarili ko. Because DBM told me front, Ma'am, pwede ka naming makausap? Wala kang mga kasama dito sa maliit na kwarto? And they showed me, gustuhin man naming bayaran yung sinasabing 10 points, uh, malaki po yun eh, I think 30 billion. Itong mga iba, hindi ito totoong miyembro. At ito yung pinapabayaran ng miyembro para i-justify yung 10.6 billion because it's there as a program fund. Laking gulat ko nung makita ko that the list of members there are existing members. Ibig sabihin, miyembro na, ginawa pa ulit na miyembro. Binago-bago lang yung mga pangalan. This is the worst thing. They carve out the names of the dependents of PhilHealth members. Ibig sabihin, kung si Congressman Mike Defensor, meron siyang akasawa, Mrs. Danica Fernandez, example lang po yan. Ay hindi, Defensor mag-asawa pala, dapat pareho ang apelido, sorry. So, yung mag-asawa, meron yung mga anak. At yung mga anak, miyembro ng PhilHealth kasi anak nila. Tinang kinuha yung mga pangalan ng mga anak o kinuha yung mga pangalan ng mga asawa at nire-enroll. Ano po ang direksyon nun? Gusto lang kunin ang pera sa DBM, but there will be no new enrollments, no new members, because they just want to get the money para pagtakpan yung mga nawawalang pera sa PhilHealth. And lastly, Mr. Chair, I would very much like to initiate again reforms in PhilHealth. So if the honorable officers of PhilHealth here can bring out all the reforms we did, put it back, do not deceive the members of the board, do not deceive the PhilHealth president. Dahil paulit-ulit po ito na nangyayari. This is worse than a pandemic because the pandemic comes every 100 years. Sa inyo, every time may bagong na-appoint, dinideceive nyo. Mr. Chair, I had two very important proposals to cleanse PhilHealth. And almost all of you here are aware of that. First, individual enrollment. Pagkapanganak, miembro. Pag namatay, tanggal sa lista. Meron naman tayong National Statistic Authority eh. Pwedeng mas mababa ang premium. That's why we incorporated that in the 2017 proposed budget. I was the one who defended the PhilHealth budget for 2017. Kaya yan lumaki. Because computed doon individual membership. When I left, they pretended it was forgotten. Kasi ang totoo lang, there is a study in PhilHealth, marami yung hindi enrolled. Kasi kapag ikaw ay minor, at naging sobra ka na at 21 years old, natatanggal ka na dun sa membership ng magulang mo. Pagka ako ay member, dahil dependent ako ng asawa ko, na wala ng trabaho yung asawa ko, wala na rin akong membership. So let's do it individual para mawala yung mga pangalan dyan na hindi totoong tao. Or mga totoong tao pero ginawan ng pangalan dalawang beses, tatlong beses, limang beses. Next, you have to outsource your legal office and your finance department should be independently seen. IT? Yes. It has been always a problem. But most of it is intentional. When we tried to automate PhilHealth, kaliwat kanan na bugbog, 
ang suntat suntok ang natanggap ko. Bottom line is this. Since 2001, I was not yet in Congress. I stood up and fought against cataract fraud, citing the collusion between Philippine Postal Office and some officers of PhilHealth. Nagkaroon ng Seacrest Report. It is a Bible indicating how fraud is being done. Unfortunately, all of the copies are missing up to this point of time. That study was commissioned by DOH in the early 2000s. Nagkaroon ng reforms noong 2004, nawala ulit. Binalik yung reforms ng 2006, nawala ulit. Binalik ng reforms ng 2014 and 15, nawala ulit. It will always be a repeated cycle. Talking about universal health care law, Mr. Chair, napakaganda ng batas na ito. But that will lead us to nowhere. If the people who has been continuously deceiving the minds of those who does not understand health financing? Wala tayong mapupuntahan. Kaya ang tanong ko, Dr. Ish, you Honorable have been Green, in PhilHealth for 21 years. You, we have a curfew. Yes, Mr. Chair. Did you ever do cash advance refund for Yolanda? Kasi yan ang palagi niyong reason. Okay. May cash reason, advance po ba sa Yolanda? Yung ginagawa natin ngayon sa IRM. COVID, sa IRM. May IRM din po in 2013 for the Yolanda. May cash advance po. How did we... 